We're seeing some pushback as the Florida Democratic Party has moved forward with plans to cancel their primaries. The decision drew blowback from Democratic hopefuls Marianne Williamson and Cenk Uger, as well as voters concerned with Biden's ability to beat Trump. But the Biden administration seems to be dodging questions about the lack of a primary, as illustrated by White House Press Secretary Queen Jean-Pierre. Let's watch. So does the Florida party then <coughs> effectively canceling the Democratic primary also constitute voter suppression? I can't speak to that. Why not? You have to speak to the campaign or the, 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 or the DNC. Does the White House have any thoughts on, on I can't, those I can't, voters I, being? I can't speak to that. Is it because of the Hatch Act? Or? I just, this is, you're talking about 2024 election. You're talking about a primary. I'm just not going to speak to that from here. Okay. And this just in, the Young Turks will be hosting Marianne Williamson, Cenk Uger, and Dean Phillips in response to the fourth GOP debate taking place in Alabama. So get those three together for debate. That sounds like a great, great. idea. So Good this is them. a fascinating story. I want to be really clear about what happened in Florida. So apparently under the rules, the Florida Democratic Party can unilaterally decide what names appear on the ballot. So they have decided that only Joe Biden's name is going to appear on the Florida ballot. Florida That's one way obviously to win. Is one, right? Florida's a huge state with an enormous number of electoral votes in contention. The idea that they, and, and, and the, the Florida party, is their response to the complaints has been, well, uh, the rules have been public for a long time. If you had a problem with them, you should have said so. No engagement with the substantive ethics of a state, a major state in the United States of America saying that we are going to unilaterally decide that the people in the state only have one option. Democracy itself is at stake, Brianna. <laughs> I mean, that's the argument for Joe Biden that yeah. the Democrats are making. The, the reason not to bother putting forth alternative candidates, it's so important. Biden himself has said he's only running because he needs to defeat Donald Trump. Yes. He said that. We covered that in our top of our show today. I mean, Mary Ann Williamson made exactly that point. She said, quote, what an irony that the party called the Democratic Party, the party that claims to be the champion of democracy, has basically decided that Joe Biden will be the candidate. Now, this is authoritarianism, just as Jenk said, and then goes on to talk about uh, the Cold War with Soviet Union and her growing up and how this is exactly the kind of thing that they were warned about. Yeah, there's no way around it. Um, the process has been totally rigged against any potential challengers to Joe Biden. And it makes no sense because we have every reason to believe that if you think it's so important to stop Donald Trump, if you think it's so important to have a good Democrat, that maybe Joe Biden is not the right person for that job. We're seeing it in the poll numbers. We're seeing it in what, what Democratic voters Independent voters, Republican voters think about Joe Biden. They're dissatisfied with the job that he's done. And then in, in, a, in a very, even in a nonpartisan and nonpolitical sense, him specifically, the thing he can't change, his age, is really bothering people. Right. So you'd think you would want to at least game this out, at least make it fair for other candidates and find out, and okay, if he wins, if the Democrats decide they don't want to uh, you know, change horses midstream or whatever, then fine, so be it. Republicans are are having they're having debates they're right. having officially sanctioned debates they wish Donald Trump would participate in them Donald Trump's trying to not have a real process but they're they're having a process they're making him um, you know fight for it he doesn't have to fight very hard for it because most Republicans are not ready to move on sure. from Donald Trump but they're at least they're at least going through the motions of allowing uh, competitors to see if they can make a case that they ought to be the nominee instead of Trump yes. nothing equivalent on the Democratic side is happening and it boggles the mind I mean how vulnerable, how weak, how fragile must the Democratic Party be if they're unwilling to even al allow Marianne Williamson, Dean Phillips, and Cenk Uger's name be on the ballot? How afraid are they? What, I mean, I, I, with all due Feckless. respect. Feckless. Cowardly. <laughs> they obviously Let's get out of value <laughs> um, and support the politics of someone like Marianne or Cenk um, much more than Joe Biden. But even that aside, like, how, like, the idea that you and, and, I, and I, I'm like I'm obviously for that reason hopeful that one of them would be successful, but like realistically speaking, you're so afraid of someone who's polling so far behind you, a sitting president, someone who's been in Congress since they were like 29 years old. You're so afraid of Marion Williamson and Jen Uger can't even legally run for president. I don't think, <laughs> I know, I, I think that he should be able to, but he frankly right. is not under the law able to because he was not born in the United States of America. You're so afraid. 
that she won't even let their names yeah. be on the ballot? I mean, maybe he's correct to be afraid. His debate performances in 20, uh, 2020 were not particularly I impactfully Well, he doesn't good. have to debate. Remember, these are two separate issues. Yeah, right. Donald Trump's not showing up to debates. Nobody, he's a free man. I mean, he no should, one can lasso but... him and make him show up to the debate. So I, I think mean, he, he ought to. Should. I think they both ought to. I think he should, but, you know, that's not the RNC's... Right. Con ...and within the RNC's control. What they can control is what's on the ballot. And so the DNC is saying... Okay, fine. Hide, hide from them, Joe Biden. Don't debate them, Joe Biden. You know, uh, you do friendly media, yeah. CNN, MSNBC. They're all in your back pocket. Enjoy that. But at this point, you are drawing attention to the vulnerability of your own party. Florida should just, they should print those those uh, butterfly ballots again. We're like, I mean to vote for Jake Cougar. Oops, that's a vote for Joe Biden. Uh, Marianne Williamson, nope, another vote for, for Joe Biden. Just do it. Just do the, the Buchanan thing for the Gore voters. I mean, that's, a fa <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Well, one other thing I mentioned is that when Marianne first announced uh, that she was running as a Democrat, there were some on the left who questioned that decision, who said, you ran in 2020, you're not new to this race, you supported Bernie, you saw what happened to him, and he was perhaps the best situated progressive candidate that you're gonna get in a generation. And you saw the coordination of the DNC um, asking all the, um, you know, Barack Obama calling up all the candidates to drop out to consolidate a, a moderate bloc against him. We referenced earlier in the show Donna Brazil leaking debate questions to Hillary Clinton back in 2016. We've seen all the ways yeah. that it was rigged against him. Why would you want to be a part of a, of a party that is clearly going to be working harder against you than the Republican Party. And this moment does seem to validate some of the concerns that progressives had, that you were never going to get a fair shot within the Democratic Party. And at least now someone like Cornell West or RFK Jr. are going to be on a ballot in Florida. I mean, assuming that, I don't know about, frankly, um, Cornell West is an uphill battle to get the number of signatures required to get on ballots across the country because he's unaffiliated and doesn't have as much money as RFK Jr. Right. But hypothetically, there's no one keeping them. It's just money and, you know, keeping them off of the ballot in states. And is it was it a good idea for Marianne Williams and to lock herself in to a party mm. that perhaps predictably was going to use these kind of shenanigans to keep her from having a fair shot? Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I understand her thinking. Yeah. And it is important, clearly, to have someone in the Democratic Party who, who is making a case that another um, nominee might be more popular. That's kind of the pitch Dean Phillips is making, yeah. because, frankly, his policies are extremely similar to Joe mm. Biden's. He's just a little, he's, he's quite a bit younger, and he, yep. he thinks he might, uh, he might resonate with voters better than, uh, than Joe Biden does. I mean, Joe Biden is also, he's a, such a known quantity at this point, commodity. Mm -hmm. Everybody has probably made up their mind about, like, are, are new people coming into the Biden coalition? I mean, Trump has this problem to an extent, too, because mm. he's, you know, he's the most name recognition on planet Earth. Um, I think most people in America actually have negative views. <laughs> they have somewhat negative views of both these people. And maybe they're just not going to vote. Maybe they're just going to be dissatisfied. And we're, we're going to find out who, who lost fewer votes mm. deciding the 2024 election when you could have had robust competition among people that when they learn about this candidate might say, oh, that's interesting. I didn't know about them, but I actually like them. They're actually registering with me. Maybe that's Nikki Haley. Maybe that's Dean Phillips. Maybe that's Vivek Ramaswamy. Maybe that's Marianne Williamson. We don't know. But the, the parties especially the Democratic Party, it has no interest right now in facilitating that. Yeah, absolutely. All right, stick around. We'll have more rising for you right after this.